All right, everyone, this will be the finals of the winner's bracket. I am CTX Rain, and we're going to be going right into the bands and picks. Uh, first band, Tristana. Second band, Rise. Rise, I think, was kind of a uh, target band for probably the mid of Elezra because he plays a pretty good Rise, and Tristana was probably banned because of CTX Mystery. played a really good tr Tristana yesterday. Yeah, he was definitely having a really impressive showing with that. Um, the CTX team has been spending about the last half an hour just uh, talking trash, figuring out who they're going to be batting. So I really think they've got uh, a really strong plan going into this game. Um, the uh, opposing team on the blue side, they've uh, definitely ran into pretty much every other tournament, and they've had uh, a little bit of trouble with them in the past, so I think they're definitely going to be taking this match very, very seriously. The, they're uh, looking pretty confident so far, and uh, we're going to see an Alistar ban and a Shen ban. What do you think of that? Um, Shen ban, he's a very standard ban. He's a really good top. He can take a lot of damage, and his alt is top, able to save anybody anywhere on the map is very good. And Alistar, uh, he's a really good bottom. He has a lot of... And he uh, has a lot of CC, especially in those team fights. He can really protect the AD carry a lot. I'm surprised that CTX actually banned because Pot Shots plays a, a really good one. Then the Leona ban, that was they uh, they banned the Leona because the Tristan and Leona that they did yesterday was really worked really well. And then the standard Morgana ban. Uh, first pick will be for blue team. Yeah, one of the things I want to point out is uh, this is of course winners bracket finals. Neither of these teams have ran into each other in this tournament. But uh, it definitely looks like we're seeing a uh, Flax Rifle here. They did get a lot of... It seems like they got a decent chance to actually scout out CTX's plan. And these bands definitely looking like they're uh, really taking advantage of that. Yeah. Uh, first uh, first pick will be Ari for Alezra. He plays a really good Ari mid. And mid, mid or AFK will have to watch out for that. Uh, first pick for purple team will be Graves. So probably we'll see... Not uh, Sera uh, Nautilus, possibly Nautilus bot or Nautilus ju uh, jungle. Uh, yeah, we'll definitely have to see how the blue team is planning to uh, counter some picks like that. Yes, I'm pretty Trying sure to deal with some of the uh, with those jungle and bot strategies. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I Josh will probably be picking up Corky. He has been playing Corky in the last couple of tournaments quite a bit. And I am not sure about this term because we haven't been able to cast blue team. Um, we have casted CTX quite a bit, or we cast them once. And that just gives blue team a bit of an advantage to see who they pick and how they play. While purple team, today they were talking about how they weren't able to really see who on blue team plays what. And then they have the Lee Sin go pro uh, going to be going top for blue team. Yeah, that uh, topic definitely going to be really useful, and we've got Mid AFK picking uh, pretty quickly there. Um, definitely some interesting choices going on here. One of the things we should point out: we have not seen Flax Ruffy yet in this tournament, but uh, they have been uh, very successful in past from the tier of Overclock Gaming. Um, I think last time they were DUI. Um, they changed their name every time that they've actually entered one of these tournaments. But yeah, uh, yep. and then the we have. The, sorry to cut you off, but they have the Tarek Kennen. Kennen is a very standard pick for mid AFK. He plays a really good Tarek. He knows him really well. He uh, he knows his strengths, his weaknesses, and how far uh, the extent of the character. Um, then they go Janna uh, and Warwick. Uh, Warwick is a pr he, he is a good top laner because uh, as soon as he hit, especially as soon as he hits level nine, his Q is very low cooldown, and he will have good amounts of mana at that point to be able to keep queuing and keep healing, doing lots of poke. So bottom so bottom lane will be Tarek, Graves versus Ash, uh, Janna. And the last pick for Herp will... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Herp Derp should definitely taking his time with uh, this last lock-in here. This is uh, really their time to basically decide how they want to play the rest of this game. A lot of options to choose from, and uh, we'll have to see if they plan for this kind of team, uh, this kind of team competition. Yeah, um, Herp right now he's always going Rumble. That would be he. I know he ha does play a really good Rumble. Again, he knows him very well, and he should do he should do fine in his lane. Yeah, so here we go. The picks are locked in. And uh, we're going to be getting this uh, 
yeah, looks like everybody's good to go. So, let's take a look at some of these uh, lanes here. Who do you think is going to have the advantage? Who do you think is going to have the disadvantage? Um, are there any adaptations that you expect to see that uh, are going to have to be made? Otherwise, um, you know, one one team might have a huge disadvantage if they don't make them. Um, I think blue blue team actually has a bit of an advantage over uh, CTX because. CTX has been casted, um, Blue Team has been, uh, should have been watching that last night or something, just uh, analyze their game and how they play and how they communicate as a team. Uh, Purple Team, like, we haven't casted Blue Team at all, so there's, and they haven't been able to spectate them because they're constantly in game, so they haven't been able to see anything of them. Yeah, that's definitely going to come into play in this next match here, CTX is uh, kind of the homebrew team. Uh, CTX Mr. actually is the owner of O'Clock Gaming. And, uh, you know, likes to sit behind the scenes. There we go. The game has begun, but we are in a three-minute delay period so that the uh, game can, can progress a little bit so that uh, nobody can uh, stream cheat or uh, look over, listen to any of the commentary, and really get any useful information. Great feature in League of Legends that uh, I really wish did exist in a lot of other games outside of a, a delay server on something like Twitch TV or something like that. Yeah. So let's take a look at these top lanes here. Uh, what do you think? Uh, top lane Rumble versus Warwick. Uh, I'm not. I don't know that uh, top lane too much or how, who counter picks who very well. But I think Rumble will do fairly well against Warwick because uh, that flamethrower uh, does a lot of AOE, does a lot of AOE damage and has a big radius. And if Warwick steps outside of behind the minions, he'll use. Then Rumble is going to use his uh, oh shoot, and then he is just going to use his uh, shots. He has uh, I forget what the ability is called, but he shoots. Yeah, <laughs> he's one of his abilities do a lot of harass, and he all uh, Rumble also has the shield. And Warwick, like we were saying, bef like I was saying before, he has that sustain with his Q, so he will be able to stay in a lot, uh, a good amount of time. Yeah, that's definitely going to be very useful. Pretty much everybody here picking uh, the same summoner skills. So uh, this is, of course, competitive-oriented game. Everybody's got all the summoner skills and everything unlocked. Nothing to worry about there. And uh, let's take a look at the uh, mid lanes here. What do you think we're going to see? Um, Alezra, I know he has a very good Ari. I've played against it before. It's not very fun. Uh, and Minaray FK's Kennen is also uh, pretty good. We've seen it in the... In the previous game that we cast at CTX, uh, yeah, uh, Ari is pretty good against Kennen being able to get around so quickly. Uh, especially because uh, he chooses not to max his Kennen does, uh, chooses max his Q first, which is a skill shot. And with Ari's movement speed with her alt, she can really dodge those so well. But for me, when I play Kennen, I max my W first because your stacks on your auto attack, but the electricity on them, then you can just use your W to get guaranteed damage instead of especially because Alezra well he knows how to play mid really well and he knows where he's supposed to be and he will be able to dodge those cues pretty well alright very interesting why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, the bot lanes and maybe some of the jungle strategies you might see here alright um, the bottom lane Ash Janna is pretty strong she the shield that she throws on gives her a, a bunch more AD that will really help trade really help those poke trades in blue team's favor uh, there is that stun from Tarek Graves which works really well is a lot of guaranteed damage so we are hopping into the game now All right, here we go right into the game. Uh, Boots plots is very st uh, standard from yeah. AD carries now are starting to go more boots plots now rather than going for the the Dorian's blade like Graves has. Um, it looks like both teams are looking to do uh, lo looking to do some invading. Welcome to Yeah, it looks Rift. like they're going to be gearing up all five players on both teams going down this mid lane here. There is here. some sight. They did see each other. 
And there's some early damage. And he misses that Q again. And very even shade. He missed that Q. And there's no abilities used from the Lazar because he doesn't want to waste his mana. Yeah, with all five players on both teams here, it's a very fragile situation. We can see mid or AFK and Elezra kind of peeking out, but uh, the rest of the players on both teams just sitting back in the uh, outside of LOS, trying to bait one of the teams or one of the players to come forward and maybe get a quick first blood in this early stages of the game. Definitely a great thing to do, but it uh, does not look like anybody's going to be taking the bait quite yet. Yeah, for late game wise, uh, Kennen and Rumble will both be going Woda. That will give them the double Woda gives them. Um, some decent damage and it gives them a lot of lifesteal off their abilities. Yeah. And Warwick going back for some reason. That uh probably gonna pick up another pot. Minions have spawned. Yeah, he's probably gonna pick up another pot before the it gets going. And there's an early word from pot shots up there just to see if they're invading or not, and Rumble also going back for that pot as well. Yeah, and now we're going to see Idrosh and Samuel immediately get to work on some of these jungle creeps here while they wait for the minions to get in the lane, try to get a little bit of an early uh, experience advantage. And uh, it looks like we're also going to see some uh, early buff attempts here. Yeah, the blue has spawned, and CTX is already lining up to get that very quickly here. Minions about to get into the lane, so we're going to see this uh, winner's bracket final game get started right now. Yeah. Uh, Idrosh and Samuel, uh, a lot of teams we've seen haven't been going for that double golems and it's very good you take if you do it right you'll take very little damage little to none and it just sets you ahead especially for those uh, level two fights uh, as soon as usually that plays really well with uh, as soon as people hit level two they'll go straight in there and start hitting people and iron uh, ganking Lezra already he hits that bind and a lot of damage is going to, she is going to just be able to flash right over the wall like that and just get away but he had to, had to burn his flash no other summoners were burnt yeah and now Lezra's going to have to stay back a little bit losing valuable time and uh, opportunities to get some of that extra farm mid or AFK going to take he, an ever so and Lezra is now. able to poke and he had uh, uh, poke mid or AFK and actually is able to do quite a bit of damage to him as well uh, yeah. top lane rumble is being the bully he is and starting to be able to bully him up Warwick out of lane. Yeah, you can see that uh, disadvantage of being a melee hero really coming into play here. Has to do a lot of work just to get a little bit of farm. He is looking like he's managing to do it, but not without uh, taking a little bit of damage every time here. An excellent lane so far, and uh, we're going to see Hurt Durser. He's going to try to get in there and keep the pressure on, but uh, this Warwick is uh, doing having excellent position so far, minimizing the damage he's taking despite the fact that he's technically in a dis disadvantageous position. A problem we've seen with Herb Derpser, he, he starts poking, he starts harassing, he gets really confident, and he does that a lot without wards, especially in this area here, and he has been punished for that in this turn before. Yeah, so uh, right now we're basically just seeing the, seeing the early stages of this game right now. Both teams doing as much as they can to win their lane and uh, get whatever advantages they can as far as experience and gold are concerned. And uh, if we just take a look at the scores on the top of the screen, we can see right now we've got uh, Flax Rifle just an ever so slight advantage at uh, 4.9k over 4.8. But uh, CTX is closing it very quickly. Rumble did take a tower hit, but he is poking that uh, Warwick down very effectively. And now uh, we can see he's got the lane pushed pretty far up. Warwick down to about 50% life. And uh, we've got that rumble. Now we're going to be falling back. He's going to be uh, trying to set something up here. And uh, we're going to give... That's going to give Warwick the opportunity to push this lane back up. But not without taking a bit of damage. Taking a lot of hits. And uh, again, Warwick just taking so much damage. He really can't afford to be too aggressive here. Having a really hard time getting any space in this lane. Yeah, at this point, he's, he's starting to fall behind in, in CS. Oh no, they are very even right now. Uh, Warwick is doing a good job and getting harassed and being able to still get that farm. I Josh backing is now going to pick up that Doran's Blade, three pots and a ward. And Mystery is still only on that Doran's Blade. Yeah, and I think I saw a purple ping go down on uh, one of the wards here in the blue jungle. So uh, they are aware that they need to be careful when uh, moving around that side. Yep, they They've do also have got a pink purple ward. ward here and there's the gang top. Oh coming down and slowing on the Herp Dirtster. He is getting very low. There's the first blood. Again, him getting very overconfident. Yeah, he was doing really well in that lane, but uh, you know, right about the time when you hit level 5, you've got, you can have three points in pretty much any one of those skills, and that is the time 
in these games where uh, things like ganks really start to occur. Now things are going to be a little bit more tense, and it looks like we're going to see a gank middle now from I'm Just rifle. missing the charm, Alezer. If he would have hit that, that could have been another another kill. Yeah, Midori FK doing a great job being aware of anything like that. Um, not realizing that that uh, top that uh, top gank did just go MIA. So uh, great mobile play here so far. And uh, right now we're just going to see... Oh, we've got some action going down in the middle. And we're going to see Lee Sin down in the jungle here. Looking like we might see a bot gank from Flax Ref. And at the same time, Iron is ganking this uh, ganking Elezar. Midori FK doing a nice job of uh, coming up with that. Iron going in the right direction, and then they're just going to back off. Yeah, because they, they don't have sight of the Lee Sin. Yeah, they can't tell without Lee Sin. Is they got to be very, very careful, especially at this point in the game. Lee Sin, such a strong champion indeed. And now we're going to see uh, this mid lane kind of reset here. Meanwhile, we're going to see this rumble or not. Uh, Mitch is getting charmed, and taking a lot of free damage oh, because wow. of it. And again, he is maxing his Q, and he is missing it still. So he is losing a lot of damage. And if he instead went for electrical surge, for the auto attack again, and there's the commit, and there's the alt, and mid is going to go down. Unless we're getting very low, he still has another alt left, I do believe. Ooh, just barely misses he with barely that gets away with his life because of that. Wow. And Lee here to support him. Yet yeah, does uh, a little dash forward there to make sure that. Uh, there's no way that Ari goes down. Ari now going to be backing to uh, regenerate some of that health, making sure that uh, not going to give any free kills away to CTX to score right now. 2-0, to zero, and uh, the gold advantage definitely in favor of Flax Rifle at this point of the game. Uh, still too early to call it uh, at this point, as we're only uh, 7 minutes and 25 seconds into the game so far, but a very close game indeed. And uh, right now... We are going to be uh, watching Iron. He's just going to be getting this blue buff here, getting ready for uh, some kind of gank. Maybe a gank here on the bottom lane as we've got, uh, right now we've got CTX Mystery with that Graves and Pot Shots as well. He's going to be hanging out here in the brush. And uh, as soon as we get that blue, we'll have to see where this Nautilus go goes. It might be mid, in fact. Now that uh, Warwick went back and picked up two Null Magic, and he is, has a lot. He has, over, he has 102 MR right now, so he is able to bully out that rumble now that he's taking such reduced damage. And uh, another gank is coming in onto Elezra, but his ult should be up by now. No, it's not. 20 seconds away. So uh, Iron should have swung around again to get that, but yeah. they're not going to be able to get anything. Just barely getting that. Yeah, and busy. now it looks and like Elezra... Iron missed that charm, or he would have got a lot harder. He would have got a lot more damage on him. Yeah, really great positioning so far by Elezra. Still managing to get the pokes and the hits in wherever he can, but uh, still managing Elezra. to avoid getting yeah. taking too much damage, despite the fact that he's been dealing with ganks for quite a, a long period in this of this game now. And there's the gank on the top. There's the alt. Warwick, he missed the alt because of the Warwick alt. And Warwick is getting very low. He did use flash. And one of three, and they're just City. barely not getting it. Wow. Iron would have got one more to auto attack, and he would have got the stun. And uh, uh, Lee Sin came in and ganked and took out that Graves, while Graves took out the son, uh, took out the Janna of the other team. Yeah, and now Lee Sin just going to be roaming around that jungle once again, going to be initiating here on some of those uh, jungle creeps. You meanwhile, back in that uh, top lane, it does in fact look like uh, Warwick did cancel that teleport to go back home is instead he's going to be staying in the lane getting that extra experience wherever he can definitely a, a great decision now he's going to be able to clean up that wave now he's going to go back to regenerate the flare goes down on herp's Der herp derpster but uh warwick is already out of there this top tower is definitely in uh, a little bit of a risky situation here but uh it looks like we're going to see warwick immediately start running back there yeah as you were talking uh iron came for a gank but he, again he he missed his he missed his pull just barely he if you want if he should have swung around this if he would have swung around this way or instead of just going through the mid if you just swing around to, to this part it makes ganks a lot more effective yeah and we've still got Lee Sin roaming around in that bottom jungle just uh grinding away here if any of these teams push too far up then uh, they're at risk so uh, we're gonna see here 
We've got this bot lane pushed up quite a bit, and Lee Sin is not too far away. That's constantly a threat that CTX has to be dealing with. And you can see they're very weary about pushing too far forward, despite as far as they can see, all they have to deal with and is Iron one Gang other coming for, an for another gank on uh, Alezra. But mid not uh, going, should have at least tried to get in there and try to get that stun or do something. And Alezra also had his ult, so he would have been he would have been just fine. That's the thing with Ari, she is very hard to gank with that. Sorry, I did miss another engagement bottom with that Lee Sin gank. Lee killed that Graves, well Graves killed the, ja the Janna double again. Kill. And there's the double kill for Lee, so that puts Ash pretty far ahead. Yeah, this bottom lane just has not been going very well for CTX so far. They've been, uh... Like I was saying, they've been very weary about pushing too far forward, and it looks like they tried to pull the trigger. Lee Sin came out and uh, just, just grabbed the pull and whipped it back in the face. And Sorry right about now. this and that other gang top. Uh, Rumble and Nautilus did take off that Warwick. Yeah, we've got another Nautilus. gank. Oh, there's, a, there's a nice gank. And there's the ult going very low. And he is going to pick up that kill. He's going to pick up this kill on the Lee Sin as well. No, he does flash away. And so does Iron right behind him. Yeah, Iron very close. Lee Sin dangerously uh, low. Tell, uh, shoots away. Very good. And Samuel comes in. And he's just ulting enough where he would have died as well. Yeah. With, with that stun from Minor AFK. And Ijosh is going back. Yeah. Really, CTS and now they're yeah they're, they're now they're going for the dragon and they're going to get a free dragon out of this. That yeah, free dragon now the ult is on cooldown for Samuel and there's really nothing they can do about this dragon here. Leeson is going to try to get back in the fight and it looks like they might try to do something about this two on three. Try to steal it, but uh, it's, it's they will not be able to do it. With that, CTX did catch up pretty well. There are just there are only one K, but I mean, a hundred gold globally behind. Yeah, it's uh, definitely looking a lot better for them now, despite the fact that uh, they were down a little bit earlier. As we can see, this game's still very close here in the winner's bracket finals of the Edmonton League of Legends Open here at Overclock Gaming and Computers. If you guys have been enjoying the tournament so far, be sure to follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash okgaming. And it looks like right now this bot lane is kind of reset. We're going to see Samuel is going to try to fall back, but there is a ward there, so uh, they know exactly the position of where everything is in this bot lane. Lee Sin pretty far away right now. We can also see that uh, Mid AFK is actually going to be going back, giving a Lesra the time to continue farming up here. Meanwhile, at the top lane, we're uh, just seeing both of these players kind of grind away against one another, but uh, with no ganks in sight, it's really just going to be some mindless poking for the time being. Yeah, Alezra will be able to play pretty aggressively. He does see, he does see these these uh, ganks coming in. He did, he just, he is getting that time there on that ward right there, which is very good. And they are just gonna get Alezra blue buff. Yeah, and it does look like the uh, Flax Rifle team did see that ward go down near that uh, Barren River, and uh, that's definitely gonna help them out as far as uh, game plans are concerned. Now the uh, CTX team is going to be able to see any top ganks coming in. Iron, a uh, very good choice of getting that Oracles. There's a lot of, uh, there's quite a bit of wards out right now that he will be able to just clean up as long as he doesn't die before he gets a lot of use out of that. Yeah, and right. there's going to be a gank on there. There's the ult, but then there's a Lezzer's ult getting away. Yeah, now that tower and now there. He's ulted uh, again, and it's going to be able to take Iron down to just below, or just, yeah, just below half health. And yeah. Warwick is now coming in. Yeah, now uh, looks like CTX starting to get a little bit more aggressive here in this bot lane. Lee Sin has looks like he's been spotted by this uh, ward here at the top. Lezzer is going to go down to mid or AFK, which is very nice play. He almost yeah. died as well. And Lee Sin coming up right behind to come to uh, come after him. He is very close. Oh, yeah. he is, is going to be able to get away with that. Yeah, great play here by mid or AFK. Meanwhile, in that bottom lane, they were trying very hard to do whatever damage they can in that tower, realizing that the threat of Lee Sin has been for the time being gone, but they just could not get close enough to uh, start poking away that tower. Here we go, we've got Grace pushing in. Gonna try to do a little bit of damage there, but Idrosh falling back. We've got uh, the tornado there, keeping everybody at bay, and now we're gonna see Pot Shots go back to base, or, or not, it's gonna be canceling out of that. With no uh, minions here, they're gonna be very careful about trying to deal with this tower. Gosh, at least didn't have a bit of a scrim, but Iron taking a lot of, bit, a lot of the damage, or taking more damage, and is, yeah, and that engage was done. Yeah, here we go. We got Rumble. 
is gonna try to get some more damage on this Warwick. Warwick definitely looking he like he's been struggling with yeah. this lane with that tower down to about 50%. A lot of minions to try to deal with here. And no, oh, we've got uh, Lee Sin Since moving the long the way right now. The gang and and Herp. Herp is ready for it. Yeah, he's been spamming forward, but uh, this Lee Sin looks like he's gonna be turning around, go heading back towards that mid. He is gonna get spotted by that ward. They know exactly where the enemy team is right now. CTX in a great position. Oh man, they're almost getting caught with that charm again from Ezra. And uh, Rumble just going to go right back to that top lane here. Meanwhile, we got pot shots down here. The bottom is going to be warding that bottom lane near that tri bush, and uh, we're going to see basically both of these teams are trying to set up for some kind of gank here. We're going to see Iron going to be going back towards that top lane. Rumble has been so close to picking off this Warwick, but just cannot get close enough to actually do it. But now with Iron here, he may be able to actually do that. Just waiting for the right moment to strike. Yeah, they're probably going to go for a dive here, but again, diving on that Warwick probably won't be the best idea, because as soon as he comes in, you will just be able to ult you, whoever has the tower, whoever has the tower focusing on. Oh, and it looks like they're just going to try and fall back and get a free tower while I, Josh, picking up the kill on the Terrence in the bottom lane. Yeah, and that looks like it's going to be the first tower of the game going in favor of CTX. And now we're going to see uh, Lee Sin's going to start invading the enemy jungle here. They do have some wards in their jungle and now he's just going to be looking Lezer uh, taking a lot of damage might might go down here again he missed that Q yeah no team support in sight whatsoever as well Lezer definitely going to be taken out of uh, out of the fight for at least for a little while while he uh, regenerates there meanwhile Lee Sin's going to try to get here on mid or AFK will not be able to do so he's going to close up in with that Nautilus and now they're in control of the middle lane once again and now they're going to be able to get to work on this mid tower. Lezra back here once again, going to try to poke forward. And uh, they're going to do their best to try and keep them off this tower. Need to keep this tower alive. And look at that. Oh, does not try to uh, continue initiating. And uh, it does look like that Ari is going to go back, regenerate buy some more items here meanwhile uh we're basically just seeing the rest of these players kind of roam around the map and uh continue farming so uh let's talk about some of these item builds here while we've got uh a little bit of a break in the game how do you think things are going so far uh for ctx pretty well they do have that double water for the team fights uh which was pretty much rushed with it by the both of them a rumble getting that no magic for the warwick's ap abilities and there's the ult on the mid of Kane. And Lee Sin comes in, he's gonna be able to ult him away. Oh no, Alezer. Oh, Alezer comes in too through the triple gank, and Alezer does pick up the kill. Yeah, and it does really start, it's really starting to look like that is what it's gonna take in order to actually get some of these ganks. But the, the two on one ganks just haven't been really working for any of these teams. And now we've got uh, Ari, Warwick, and Lee Sin. They're gonna be picking up this dragon here. Meanwhile, we've got. The rest of the CTX team is going to be pushing around top. They know they're here at this dragon. It looks like we're going to see the first major team fight of the game. Yeah, with that, uh, with Kennen down there, they're doing lose a lot of AOE damage, and there's still some going on for Herb Dimster. Warwick flashing it all. Um, uh, Lee Sin taking a lot of damage, and very low. He just survives, and they're first back way. Uh, Warwick is going to die, and Itosh picks up the kills on Pot Shots. A lot of AOE get, get damage going down as well. Iron dying as well. And mystery, keep, keep, is, they're still engaging on the. And mystery is going to go down here. Uh, uh, Guarantee with that with that charm. Yeah. Huge in fight. They did get dragon and they took out three kills for one. Very nice trade. And they pulled, and they did again pull ahead. Yeah, it looks like they had to sacrifice that Warwick there in order to get the position that they needed, but a very great sacrifice indeed. Now with these three players here, going up against mid or AFK by himself, they should not have too much trouble getting this middle tower, and that would be the first tower down for uh, Flax Rifle this game so far. It's a 3k gold advantage right Yeah, that, uh, that last team fight definitely helping them out a lot. A lot of momentum now swung in favor of Flax Rifle, CTX gonna have to step their game up gonna have to go on the defensive for a little while here while they uh, try and set everything back up needs to be uh, really weary about how they engage in those next team fights yeah especially because that cannon wasn't there they shouldn't really have gone in uh, but if they would have had cannon there yeah sure they would have done so much damage uh, such that cannon if such if we wouldn't have got focused down to be able to get through everybody use us all there the team fight would have been swung the other way yeah so uh, I think in this next time here they're really going to have to be very, very careful about how they read into where the team fights are going to happen, how they want to get into them. 
as uh, last time, like you're saying, without that cannon there, it's just it just did not really work out very well for them. And uh, in the meantime, they're gonna have to be really careful about dealing with ganks and stuff. Let's take a look at some of the ward placements. Both teams with that bot lane tribush uh, having it warded here, and uh, they do they are aware of uh, Idrosh as well as Samuel just hanging out. They're trying. They can they're see each other. trying to defend their ward. That's gonna go down. Basically, what does not know that that Lee Sin is there and is gonna get caught. Nice job on the Lee Sin being able to get in there. And there's the alt ash, uh, the ash alt onto the pot shots, and he's taking a lot of damage. So there's a flash away. And the uh, Miss Q from Lee Sin. Yeah, and here we go. We've got uh, Herb Derbster is going to be starting to make his way down to the bot lane, but no, it does not look back. like they are going to commit to this. And uh, another ward going down. We're seeing uh, a bit of a shift in the strategy here for Flax Rifle, looking like they're really trying to deny as many of these wards as possible. I think they picked up on the fact that the uh, the warding of CTX is really about go with for this uh, mid tower right now. Sorry to cut you off. Uh, yeah, like I was saying, the the, uh, the warding from CTX has worked really been a lot, been uh, what's letting them stay alive so far. And without those wards, it seems like uh, like we just saw Mystery poking forward, not really being completely aware of what he was trying to deal with, getting kicked off there. So uh, now with these wards going down for uh, Flax Rifle, I think they're in an excellent position so far. In that mid tower, uh, Lesser kept putting himself in a pretty vulnerable position. Herb just running straight away when Iron's right there. And there's the ult on the Herb Derpster. Herb Derpster is going down very fast. He's going to get be able to get away. And the Lesser gets knocked up and it's going to go down really quick. And there's the cannon ult. Yeah, here we go. We've got now Warwick trying to get out of there. Chasing the Warwick, but Warwick is going to be able to get away. And now we've got uh, the rest of the team here over in the mid lane. It does look like we're going to see one of them back out. No, these are they got to stay here. They're going to lose this tower for sure, which they pretty much are. While her character just goes back to the top lane. And yeah, now they're going to start putting putting the work on this tower. Oh, there it goes. And uh, right now it's uh, two towers to one in favor of CTX, but with uh, the kill advantage in favor of Flax Rifle, we're still looking at a relatively even uh, game. Iron getting Asher. a little hyper aggressive and there. there. There's the, another engage. And there's the ult from Graves doing not very much damage. Yeah, and we can see here once again CTX needs to be very weary about how they're going to engage in these team fights. Uh, Flax Rival, the only member of their team that they're missing right now is Ari. And uh, meanwhile, up top, we've got this Rumble just continuing to free farm away, getting as many of these kills as he possibly can. Um, yeah, and it looks like right now we're just going to see everybody they're trying to find the best way to go for another engagement here, and they just can't seem to find what they're looking for at this point. All these teams being very, very weary. Um, especially CTX after that last team fight knows that they really just cannot afford to lose another one so severely uh, and then risk the other teams basically snowballing out of control. If blue team uh, picks off that cannon again, and, and at that point they should be able to uh, should try to pick, uh, force another team fight because they will they will be winning the team fights without the cannon. And there's so much AOE damage. Yeah, and now it looks like we're gonna see uh, maybe gonna be a bit of an for dragon right away. Here. This is warded. They do see uh, CTX does see Samuel pushing around here, but they did throw a ward of their own down. Uh, not gonna be sticking around too long to try and clean that ward up. Instead, it looks and like they're CTX gonna try to go for the spot tower. Maybe I don't know if they're gonna be going for going going to be going for Baron. They're gonna. Maybe try to bait it. There is a ward. Uh, there's no ward there. And there's two flashes on the miss alt. That's, that's two yeah. alts that went down for nothing. Here now they're putting themselves in a very tight choke. Ward flash on the miss. Mystery goes down super quick. And there's a lot of AoE damage coming down from that. Ari Ari is backing away, but she's coming back on. She is going to have to 1v1 that cannon. And Kenshin will come back in. And there goes down the Terra through the eye Josh. And Lee Sin barely getting away. And Herb also going to be able to go and going to go down and there's wow. a triple kill from Ash also getting out that Nautilus and mid AFK is barely getting away almost just dodging that Q from Alessra and mid AFK has got a long way to go if he wants to be able to get out of here alive to to wow. so he's just going to get ace and they're going to go be possibly pushing to an inhibitor or going for the Baron like that was just pinged yeah even though the uh that we've got CTX having that uh that ward there Alessra can just do this alone the other yeah they're they do not have enough time for that Baron but they are just going to Go get that dragon. 
Yeah, and uh, right now it looks like they're going to be trying to defend this middle tower, but with already so low, they're not really going to be able to do very much. Mid tower has now gone down, and uh, looks like uh, they did just quickly check this dragon here. We're going to see both of them go back, and uh, we're never going to see Flax Rifle. They're going to be buying their items, getting ready for this next wave with that 16-7 uh, advantage. They're uh, definitely in an excellent position. And, uh, we got hype in the house right now. Here we'll clock gaming. Uh, we've got uh, the ward from Flax Chef. We're going to be going down on this Baron here. It does look like it might be out of vision of uh, the CTX war, which has been in position behind the Baron in the Baron pit here. And we've got... Uh, looks like we might see another team fight here in the middle lane. In the next few minutes here. Yeah, now that Blue did get that ace, they are very far ahead in gold at this point. And they're, and they're going to have to try to push their advantage. The, that was a very nice engage that Ash Arrow, Ash and Warwick, uh, Warwick ulted, and and then as soon as that was off, uh, Graves was exposed to that Ash Arrow and did eat it. And then at that point, it was pretty much dead Graves, and they still had their AD carry up, which just did so well for them. Samuel, with that Oracles, did not go all the way to the back to sweep that ward, so they are going to know that they are not barren. They are going to try to fake it. Yep, so here we go. How do you think this next team fight is going to play out? How does CTX need to adapt in order to win some of these team fights they and got, not get A's? They need to protect Graves. Graves is going to be doing most of their damage. Yeah, so right now Flax Rifle threatening that Baron. And uh, we've got Warwick over here on the top. Looks like he's just going to try to uh, bait himself out here a little bit. But uh, with these wards, they know. And there's the engage. There's the getting caught there. And there's the ult of Mystery going down extremely low again. But he's going to be able to heal with that lifesteal. And Warwick ult. And then there goes down Mystery. While Lesnar get, getting doing a lot of damage to Minaray FK. But there's the three. There's two down for one right now. And they Minaray FK. K getting very low, chasing it, oh, it chases to his Elezra. death, and Elezra could be getting caught here right away, and there's a nice Janna ult, going to be putting that trade uh, even. Oh, and there we go, Herb, oh. Herb, Herb Dursa is going to be able to pick that Ari. That's definitely going to be huge. These, these are the and Warwick's going to get caught oh. here also. Yeah, Warwick's definitely going to try on the other way, but uh, CTX a little bit out of position. Iron trying missed to pick his, this his up. ability to pull them closer together. Yeah, they were definitely not expecting to get uh, see a free a free Warwick hanging out in the bush. That they were a little bit out of position to try and capitalize and on. And they're that. gonna go for a Dragon that stopped there. Not quite yet. Uh, didn't get a time on that, but uh, those are the kind of engagement that the CTX needs in order to get back into this uh, into this game. But it does not really look like they've been able to capitalize on this too much. We're gonna see Iron gonna try to pick off this bot tower here. But uh, with Ash and Lee Sin already out on the field, they're going to be pushing down through this bottom jungle and bottom lane. And uh, Iron is in a little bit of a risky position here with no team support anywhere nearby. Lee Sin going to try and uh, jump forward here, but uh, Iron is immediately going to fall back. And uh, not quite able to catch one of the walls there. Ash not going to be able to pick him up nonetheless. And now we're going to see uh, both teams just start to roam around the map. Start to buy up their uh, some more items. You can see a lot of the CTX players moving back. A lot of as, pins, uh, pings going on on Samuel because he has that Oracle. So he did just clear all of their wards again. Yeah, very uh, frigid point in the game here. You can see both these teams really need to be really starting to feel the pressure. This is uh, a best of one here in the winners bracket finals. Uh, neither of these teams wants to go to Lucy Bracket. They want to be the final boss in the grand finals here. Yeah, especially they want they don't want to have to win two best of threes to take the turn. They just want to be able to take the one. Yeah, definitely uh, helps them out a lot. As far as endurance is concerned, we're going to see uh, CTX now gather themselves up near this Baron once again. They have the Warden the Baron pit, a lot of them hanging out in the bush here. Kennen is taking uh, his time to get to the team, though. Yeah, the Kennen has been far out of position for a lot of this game. Do you think that's really starting to work uh, against their favor? Uh, yes and no. Him coming in late does oh. uh, get him able to be able to come in later in the fight and just be able to alt everyone with all those, uh, with like the Warwick all down oh, okay. especially. And then not being able to focus him down instantly just destroy him. He has most of the damage. And there's the arrow Ooh. just picking up the hit on mid of K, and there's the Q from Lee Sin barely missing. 
And there's a Shirelius from Purple Team. They're going to charge in here. Yeah, and they're they're gonna gonna uh, defensive Shirelius out. And not quite able to pick up any damage. Now we're going to see the army of Flax Rifle players going to be swinging around through this jungle here. We've got the entire CT acquisition positioned uh, right here in this uh, jungle. Now they're going to be pushing out and we're going to see a team fight in the next few minutes here. They're so Blue team really to has other. to spread out for those AoE alts that red team has. Yep, yeah, they're going to try and pick off this ward and we'll be able to take it out. Another ward immediately getting thrown down there. And uh, he Iron Game very low as well. Those are popping up the wall. Lee Sin going straight down. I Josh is getting focused really hard. Yeah, here we go. Double kill. Grace is also and, down uh, as well. Minery of Key getting chased out of the fight. And Warwick is chasing. He's going to pick him, pick him up the kill. And there goes that. And Lesnar getting very low as well. He's going to have to run away just barely living. While Warwick is going to be able to gauge a nice tornado saving him. And putting that team engage in their favor. Yeah, definitely uh, a great way to and turn that around. It was out. really looking like CTX was in an excellent position there. And the flare going down on the uh, on the dragon there. They're going to try and capitalize on that uh, that last team fight there, putting the gold advantage uh, even farther in their favor. Um, let's talk a little bit about the team compositions here. Now that we've seen them start to progress towards the late game, do you think uh, either of these team compositions are really helping out or working against either of these teams? Um, no, I think I think the team comps are pretty work pretty well with each other. The rumble, the rumble cannon with the double voda is very strong for them. But yeah, and the other team Warwick is very good because he can just go straight on the carry, and then there's nothing that carry can do without. But that Terek does have that stun to cancel that though, and they're uh, they're gonna get this red buff for um, the blue buff for Elezra. Which will help him out a lot. And Cannon is going for his own, but he's nowhere near this team fight if they want to engage on this. With, with not, and the, uh, the thing is that they don't know that Cannon is on the other side, or they should, or they would be probably pushing for Baron right now. Yeah, Alezra going to be able to get a lot of free farm here in this uh, in this top lane. Meanwhile, CTX, they've kind of given up on the whole farming so far, and they're really just looking to be in the right place at the right time. And uh, given that they're so far behind. In the gold lead, I mean, they they really need to start to work towards getting ahead and uh, getting themselves back into the game. They're now down uh, about 8,000 gold, which is a pretty significant number. Yes, uh, Ash and Graves are pretty big gold differences. This is a 4k lead for Ash, which is really big for 80 carries alone. And here we go. It looks like Flax Rifle wants to get this Baron, but uh, CTX it. knows that they're coming. And that, uh, that ward there definitely going to help them out. We can see, yeah, that does look like they're going to be trying to bait it here. CTX knows that this is a bait, not going to take it. And both of these teams just kind of dancing around one another. And look at this. Samuel's going to start poking forward a little bit too far. The ward get, getting thrown down almost immediately by both players. And uh, neither of these teams just wants to go for it quite yet. Now they are here out in the open, out in the mid lane. And uh, if there was ever a time, it would be now. Still no engagements quite yet. Why do you think uh, either one of these teams is just being so timid as far as these engagements are concerned? What is it that they're looking for as far as initiation? Oh, there, there's oh, the there charm go. on the Graves. Graves going going low. Warwick was coming for that ult, but uh, Mister did get away in time. Uh, they really don't want to engage right now without that Lee Sin being there. Okay. And uh, they're trying to hang out here in this bush. Here, and there's this really is Warwick being. They should have just went top for the Warwick and the Janna, probably. No, but that tornado would have been able to keep them safe. And they're just throwing these wards, and you're constantly just, and they're being able to be picked up. Yeah, and it really it is looking like uh, Flax Rifle is just kind of trying to find a way in here. CTX has basically put up the Iron Curtain, not going to let them through, and uh, looks like they're going to start to fall back a little bit here towards this jungle. And uh, now. Here we go. It looks like they were starting to get pretty aggressive. They're so close. Not very many places to run now. Still, both these teams very timid as far as, far as this engagement. So five people in that bush. They have to be. They really have to watch out oh, for that iron ash arrow. 
Yeah, they did throw the ward down in that bush to see uh, what is on the other side. Excellent warding by both these teams so far. Going to clean up some of these minions here. And now it looks like they are gonna. We're gonna see Flagstaff get to work on this Baron. Uh, CTX is aware of this. They're gonna try to punish this. We might see a right bit now. of a pincer uh, here. Team fight down that they think that they're doing it for sure. Yeah, they've got uh, they got the Baron down pretty low, but uh, the Baron generates just so quickly doesn't make a huge difference. And uh, another ward going down there for CTX needs to keep an eye on that Baron. Now we've got pretty much the entire team in the Baron pit. Uh, hit pretty hard, so just staying just above half health. Hit, getting hit by that charm in the volley, and and then the uh, orb of deception from Ari. Yep, well these teams just kind of dancing around each other, making each other hard to hit. But uh, still none of them quite able to hit what they want to do as far as initiations are concerned quite yet. And... Uh, Flashlight will just keeps falling back and falling back and falling back. Now we've got the entire CTX team uh, in front of that Baron pit. Now this is the weirdest part of uh, League of Legends, the Dance of Baron. Whoever goes for Baron or whoever fights. It's very interesting. And now that they do have control and there's no wards, they're going to try to fake it while Alezra is up here in a, in a pretty bad spot right now, I'd say. And she is just going to be backing. I don't know if she's fully going to let that go off. Yeah, so now Alyssa are out of the fight. They could be fighting for Alyssa has five. to get there now. But CTX doesn't know that. And uh, they've just been falling back to another defensive position. That is going to give Flax Rifle the chance to start pushing forward a little bit once Alyssa, again. Alyssa, I, I mean, uh, no worries. Flax Rifle is going to start to do damage on that Baron buff. They, are, they have to back out now. There's the fl Flash Alt on iJosh, but he does Flash Alt. Uh, you just flash to a good safe player. There's the ult from Lesnar, KK hitting most of them. But uh, Warwick is taking a lot of damage. Minor MK getting knighted and going away. They're not focusing the mystery, and the Warwick is going to back out. And there goes Iron Ijosh. And they need, they need to kill Mystery, putting himself in a terrible position, almost going down himself while he's go going back on the Ijosh. And there goes down Terra, and they're going to have to track, and there's the kill on, on the Mystery. And they're going to get this kill on the Hook Dempster, and Minor AFK getting flashed on by Ari. And Ari is able to pick up the ace, and right now they could pro push with that long of weights, but they're just going to go for that Baron buff. Yeah, that Baron buff definitely going to help them out a lot. Right now, we've only got Janna down for uh, Flax Rifle. They've got the 10k gold lead, the 13 kill advantage, as well as the tower advantage. Everything looking great for Flax Rifle so Warwick far. Warwick can actually get this bottom, down. this bottom tower. He, he, uh, he will be able to get it. Yeah, the entire CTX team still down. Warwick can immediately go to work. Baron is down. The buff has gone down for Flax Rifle. This bottom tower definitely uh, going to die in just a few seconds here. Meanwhile, what is the plan for Flax Rifle at this point? Are they going to continue pushing? Here we go. The CTX team has respawned. The bottom tower did go down. Warwick is going to start falling back, and CTX is on the defensive. What Flax Rifle is probably going to do, they're going to go back, heal, finish their last items, get potions and try maybe try to end it right here with a push bottom because that inhibitor is destroyed yeah and uh now ctx is trying to get themselves back into position here collect those buffs get ready for the next team fight they're in a pretty bad position at this point going to be going up against that baron buff with uh, a huge gold disadvantage and uh, if they lose another team fight, the game might end right after that. Yeah, so at that point, it'll be like another two, three minutes, and the death t times will be a lot longer. Yeah, so we're going to see uh, Terror right here is going to clean up that red buff with that Lee Sin. Going to be going back to buy once again, and uh, basically at this point, CTX is just going to see if they can get any kind of small advantage to get themselves back into this game is what they really need to have happen for them. Because um, I think in these next team fights they might just get ran over. It seems like in all these team fights that have gone down, they've been basically just been getting dissected by the Flash Rifle team. Yeah, uh, Mystery would have been fine in that fight, but him and Tarek did uh, jump out, put himself in a pretty risky position, and then he did get caught. He did get caught for making that mistake. Yeah, now we got Flash Rifle. The uh, top, or the bottom inhibitor has been pinged, and looks like. 
they are going to be going for a bot lane push here throwing down all of the wards around that bottom jungle to uh, deny all of the vision for ctx they are just mopping the uh mopping the floor as far as uh, wards are concerned here and ash is fully built which yeah. is very nice for, with that ga so even focusing her will only pop that and she will still be able to stay in the fight with the life steal she has her ie last whisper bloodthirster and phantom dancer which gives him a lot of gives her a lot of damage yeah and here we go black tribal in position on this bottom lane we might see another team fight here in the next few seconds here as they go for this inhibitor the minions have arrived as well this inhibitor going to go down very quickly there's going to be the engage there's the shirelia's pop and Warwick going straight on to Mystery, taking him out of the fight while well, they are able to pick up the kill on Kennen. And now that they're able to get in there, Mystery also dropping very low. And there goes the kill onto Anonymous as well. And there's the almost killing Mystery as well. He's going to be able to pack up. They're going to be able to pick up the kill on... on and, this is, and this is game right now. Yeah, nothing Mystery can do against one on five. One of the main tower, one of the main Nexus towers goes down. The second one about to go down, and it looks like congratulations to, to Flax Rifle for taking up that kill. Final boss. They are they are in the finals right now, and CTX has to beat another team to be able to get back into the best of three for. Or now mystery, if they want to win, they got to play get Victory. to this team again, and they got to beat them in two best of threes. While Flax Rifle only has to win one. Yeah, they're going to be in an excellent position now. We're going to get the next round of games started in just a few minutes here. Uh, hopefully we can get a, a more knowledgeable commentator aside for me. I played maybe 10 you games did, of League of Legends. You did well. You did I very did, well. I did well. Uh, so we're going to get the next game started in 10 to 20 minutes here. That is going to be the uh, Losers Bracket Grand Finals here. We're going to find out who is going to be going against the uh, final boss, Flax Rifle, in the Edmonton League of Legends Open here at Overclock Gaming and Computers. I am Prodigy. With me is, of course, CTX Rain, and we're going to be back in just a few minutes here. Don't go anywhere.